it was a real experience utilizing the paintings and the work in order to write the poems and to get that out. This is the resurrection of Christ. We see Christ in the middle, see three gentlemen, two of them are almost in disbelief. And then you just see, you just see Christ chilled, looking calm. It's like, yo, folks, <laughs> here I am. I'm a big fan of tension and how tension is used. And I think in just that one move of how we see this fruit basket that's about to fall off, you can tell the tension is happening. <sighs> I've lost friends, I've lost friends. The idea of a group of men that have recently lost someone and the idea of that person coming back and sitting at the table, I think that's an amazing thing. There's the celebration of the fact that this person has returned, but there's also the sadness in thinking, how long are you here for? I think there's a universal thing when it comes to grief. I think if you've lost someone that you truly love and if they return, irrespective of race, gender, or how one identifies, if that person returns, I think the mannerisms will still be the same. I use Yoruba often in my work. I use colloquialisms in my work, whether it's slang with, with, with my mandem, with my, my friends, you know, codes that we use um, as a community. Those things are important to me. In the same way, for the majority of Caravaggio's paintings, you have the dirty feet, for example. That's important to him. His life interests me. His work is, interests me. In, in doing some of the research of, of his upbringing to a certain degree, it's no different from what I'm hearing the upbringing of, of young black boys and black men whose fathers wasn't necessarily around and all these different things of absent fathers. And I've read many articles heard many of theories of people that have not necessarily grown up within a black experience talk about, oh, of course they're gonna be in gangs because they grew up with no father and they had no father figures around. And when you kind of consider an artist like Caravaggio, who for the most part did not have as many male figures around him, even though he killed someone, he still lauded. Caravaggio is like a representation of any kind of kind of glorified white person to a certain degree in the creative field that have basically been given grace. In an interview that I saw, the, the, the historian was like, we have to understand that back then that's just what you've done. You killed people. I'm like, ah, what? what? I, you, you can't necessarily use that same thing. You can't just excuse it as, oh, that's just what you do. It's not just as easy as just that, that's just what you do then. It was just, an, it's just of his time. And I think I've heard different versions of this same thing over time. From the poem, it speaks about a, a, a community of people that escaped slavery. And as a result, they built a lake village that has markets, churches, um, schools, homes. It's an incredible story that I wasn't aware of as a history. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I, there were several stories that I hear in Black History Month, but I don't necessarily hear about this in relation to black history. And for me, it's a story of resilience and it's a story that, that is etched in the memory of the community of the people there. And on the flip side of all of that happening, because you have to kind of it's almost like it's running parallel while all of this was happening in terms of um, enslaved Africans being shipped to, to Europe and the Americas. On the flip side, Caravaggio was just living his best life. <laughs> you see what I mean? He's, he's chilling. He's, he's fighting people on one side. He's painting on one side. He's, he's in a bar flipping a plate of artichokes in the, in the, in the face of, 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 of a waiter on one side. He is, for the most part, being. He's just living. So for me, it's just those two things um, that I just really wanted to pull out of the poem to a certain degree. Again, I have no answers, but I will write poems should it create discussion. Hey, I guess I've done a good job. The Tafinu did not look back as they fled into the ocean. 
They trusted the myth and tepidness of water more than man. Guided at night by crocodiles, fatigued, their feet swollen. The Tafinu built a lake village on Ganvier. As they built, they prayed for the others, the, the breathless and the captured. I'm watching an art historian being interviewed. The news anchor asks the expert about Caravaggio, the, the painter and the, the murderer, his chapters of violence and troubled upbringing. The historian, like witchcraft, mouths an enchanting response. He was a man of his time. A denial of Caravaggio's foul behavior. An erasure spell passed on through generations. One that's excused the crimes, privilege, and power of white people. Gonvier has since swelled in numbers. The Venice of Africa now holds 20,000 people on stilts. Here, there is no forgetting. Its memory is inbuilt. <laughs>